Okay, friends, um, in this video, we're going to talk a lot about the in international system of measurements, but I wanted to start real quick with scientific notation. This is a math skill I expect you to already have in terms of like using very small numbers and very big numbers and converting them in and out of scientific notation. This is not a skill that you are comfortable with. I do have an optional video lesson that you can go to and watch that to review that concept. But um, please make sure you take care of this if you're not comfortable or confident with your ability to work with scientific notation. Our main focus today is the system international, otherwise known as the SI system, or we would probably say the international system of measurements. You may have thought of it as a metric system. Well, the metric system is actually an old term um, that we no longer officially use. Uh, the metric system had some things that are still the same as the system international, some things that are different. Um, but what happened is over the years, we have governments and international groups of scientists have got together and have standardized the units and the measurements that we use in our world. Um, this is very useful for us and there's reasons why we do it, okay? So the very first thing, which is most important, it's a universal system. So we have, have agreed upon this system of measurements, this system of units, this is the system we're gonna use so anytime we're working with um, science, business, agriculture, shipping, any of that kind of stuff, this is the system that is we should be using. Now, some countries, like our own, do use additional systems for measurements, that kind of stuff, but ultimately they have to all convert back to this system, okay? So why else is it kind of the best one that we have? The root units are based on unchangeable standards, okay? So what I mean by that is, we have standardized what the meter is, what the second is, what the kilogram is, okay? And they're not physical objects. They are things that, um, even if our entire planet were to explode and we had a small group of us go colonize another whole planet that had a different orbital system, that had a different day cycle, that had a different gravitational pull, we could still establish what a kilogram is, what a meter is, and what time was on that new planet. Uh, so it could sink back to everything that we originally have, okay? It's important that we have things that don't change. Um, that wasn't always the case. So we actually have, like the meter is now officially defined by the speed of light in a vacuum over a certain amount of time. Time is officially defined by the radioactive decay of cesium. So these are things that are so foundational that um, they should never change. Uh, base 10 increments are huge, okay? It just makes some sense that if you're going to use incremental measurements, um, they should be base 10 for ease of math. And then the prefixes are the same between units, okay? What I mean by that is the prefix kilo means a thousand of a base unit no matter what the base unit is. So a thousand kilograms is a thousand grams. A thousand, um, or sort of like, no, I'm sorry, let me say that again. One kilogram is a thousand grams. Same thing as one kilometer or one kilometer is a thousand meters, okay? Even a thousand kiloseconds, you know, or sorry, one kilosecond is a thousand seconds. So the prefix kilo always means 1,000, okay? It's not like in the imperial system where you have different words meaning different things at different times. It's all standardized, much more usable, okay? So that's why we all use it, okay? Now... Uh, in our class, there are certain prefixes that you really should just kind of know, okay? Um, and I want to take a look at those as, as we go through. There's not very many. Kilo, centi, milli, milli, and nano are really the only four that we really need to know in here, okay? Um, notice how most of them are smaller than our root. So our root is the beginning or the, the standard one. So a gram, a liter, a meter, a second, okay? So the prefixes are used anytime you come off the root. So if you use a prefix kilo, the value for that's a thousand, which means it takes a thousand of your root measurement to get to one of these. So that's why there's a thousand meters and one kilometer. Another way of looking at it is that it's 0 0.001 of a kilometer equals one meter. So you can look at it from both directions, okay? I show both because most of the time we work in small things. So usually we compare the smaller measurement, the centi, the milli, the nano, back to one of our root, okay? So centi means, you know, we think of it as being as 100, we're really centi means one one hundredth, okay? So a century is 100 years. So each year is one one hundredth of a century, okay? Milli is one one thousandth, and nano is one billionth, okay? 
Um, we use this for very small measurements in here. So notice how I'm starting to use scientific notation type of notation to help out with that. All right. These four you really should put to memory and not have to look up when you're working through those. All right. One thing to note here, we do keep seconds as our standard base. So we don't really use minutes, hours, days in our scientific measure. We do, we do like milliseconds and microseconds and megaseconds and gigaseconds and kiloseconds, that kind of stuff. One other thing to make a note of is the volume measurement one milliliter is equal to one centimeter cubed, okay? That's particularly important in chemistry because we often measure things in milliliters, okay? So those two terms can be interchanged 100%. In fact, if you actually define the term milliliter, if we poured one milliliters worth of fluid in a box, that box by definition would be one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter, or a centimeter cube. Because a centimeter measures distance, these are a volume, okay? So that's one that we want to put to memory also is that relationship. Now, temperature is interesting in the SI system because the SI system uses two scales for temperature, not just one. We use Celsius and Kelvin. Um, they're the same scale, which means they mean the same thing in terms of their increments. So if we look over here where water boils, Celsius is at, is at 100 and where water freezes, Celsius is at zero. So that's where the Celsius scale came from. Um, the problem was the coldest temperature that an atom could ever reach was a negative 273. Now, negative values are really nasty when it comes to temperatures because there's some mathematical things that we end up having issues with, like square roots or dividing by negatives, which could cause problems. So we really want to have a scale where we don't have negative temperatures. That's where the Kelvin scale comes in. They didn't rebuild the scale randomly. They actually matched it to the Celsius scale. They said, well, let's use the same scale so that a hundred increments of Celsius is still 100 increments of Kelvins, but now let's just shift that scale so the zero point is truly at what's considered absolute zero, or where there's zero energy, okay? As a result, um, these two scales are very easy to interchange between, thus we're using them both, okay? The relationship is pretty simple. You just take your Celsius in degrees, add 273 to give you Kelvin, okay? The way I always remember it is I always think that there's two brothers, the brother Celsius and the brother Calvin, and Calvin's the big brother, okay? So when Celsius was, you know, 10 years old, Calvin was 273 years older, okay? He's a lot older, but it's always that relationship. There's no fancy math. There's nothing between those two things. So you might be asking, why is there no degree sign on the Calvin? Why is it degree Celsius and not just degrees Kelvin? Well, I'm going to flip the question on you. I'm going to say, well, why is there a degree sign on Celsius? We don't have degrees on meters. We don't have degrees on seconds. We don't have degrees on kilograms. So the only time we see a degree of something is with Celsius or even Fahrenheit back in the day. Um, and the reason being is that the zero point for Celsius and the zero point for Fahrenheit wasn't a true zero. It was just a degree of the temperature. So the, because those zero points didn't represent anything that was truly zero, then they had to put a thing to, as a relationship or it's a ratio or it's a, a degree of something. It's kind of like a circle. Well, we say something is 90 degrees away from the starting point, but circles don't really have a starting point or an end point. That's why it's always 90 degrees or 270 degrees or 180 degrees away from the start point, okay? Where Calvin has a true zero. So zero Kelvin represents absolute zero, which means there's zero energy in the system. So Kelvin's is a better scale to work with when you're trying to compare it back to energy. Okay. Now, if we want to convert from Kelvin to Celsius, not too hard. If we have 298 Kelvin, we just flip the math around and we just subtract away the 273 and we get to 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. So please don't use the degree sign on Kelvin's. All right. Um, you may see in some text that they say this is 273.15, which it is. I rounded off to a whole number for this class just because it's much easier to do the math in your head. And um, to be honest with you, when you're moving things 273 positions away, the 0.15 doesn't matter that much. All right. All right. Last thing about this is we need to have a conceptual understanding of the SI system. Now, what I mean by that is if I told you that tomorrow in class, I'm going to ask you guys to walk five miles you'd probably be like, whoa, we're gonna go for a five mile walk in 45 minutes, Mr. Dirksen? That's gonna be a lot of walking. I'm probably not gonna wear high heels or um, some flip flops. I'm probably gonna get some nicer shoes because most of us really understand what a mile is. Or if I tell you, if I ask you, hey, can you go pick up that box? I go, it's only like five pounds. You'd be like, oh, five pounds, I can lift that pretty easy, okay? 
But if I told you that we had to go out and run five kilometers, or if I said, hey, go pick up that box, it's 50 kilograms, okay? Your understanding of what 50 kilograms feels like or is, is not as good as the imperial system, which most of us grew up on if we grew up in the United States, okay? So one of our understandings or one of our targets for this unit is actually to force you to get a better understanding of the SI system, okay? And I always say, can you picture it, okay? So when I say, hey, we're going to head down to Florida for vacation, it's going to be about 30 degrees Celsius the whole trip. What are you going to pack for clothes? Are you going to pack jackets, winter jackets, tank tops, shorts, okay? That would be a difference because... 30 degrees Celsius is very different than 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Or maybe if you work in a business later in your life and you're working with somebody in a different country and you say, hey, how's your day? And they're like, oh, it's, it's great. It's 25 degrees out. And you're like, 25 is cold. And they're like, uh, dumb American, Celsius. Okay. So because the rest of the world uses Celsius besides us. So it's a way to get some better understanding so you can become a better global citizen. Okay. We'll do some work with this, but that is definitely going to be something that we are doing in this unit, and you will be tested on it. All right, that is it for this uh, unit, uh, this uh, video lesson. Thank you.